Cellular temperature is a topic that makes sense in many areas in AV. If you have never heard this term before, think about when you walk into, say, a hospital and that white light illuminating the hallway is very blue and has somewhat of a cooler feeling versus, say, like a library where the white light is very orange and more warmer feeling. This is the first tangible idea behind color temperature. First, what is white? White light is produced when a light source produces a mix of all the main colors in the visible spectrum of light. What are those main colors? Red, green, blue, yellow, orange, and violet. The difference in the balance of these spectral colors per production of white light is referred to as the light source's color temperature. We also must consider the ability to perceive the white produced as that can vary per eyeball or device. So where does all this show up in AV? Well, anywhere there's light. When designing meeting spaces, what color temperature and brightness is recommended for the room? When designing TV sets or stage lighting, what lights do I need to properly light my subjects for camera? And will my cameras see white? When designing an LED solution for advertising, will the manufacturer's diodes emulate the right white balance for my task? So we get that color temperature gives off a cool or warm feeling. It also helps us decide task lighting and much more. Kelvins help us describe that difference. As our CTS guide describes, color temperature is the scientific measurement for expressing the distribution of the spectral colors radiating from a light source. This expressed in Kelvins. The higher the color temperature, the cooler the light. The lower the color temperature, the warmer the light. Check this chart out. We start with a soft, warm 1,900 kelvins as, say, like a candle light. Then we move to 3,200 kelvin temperature as, say, a home office lamp. Then we soar to 5,500 K or 9,500 K, which would be more where you would find your bright, crisp hospital lighting or garage lighting. When you read the light bulb box at a hardware store and you see something like 1,100 lumen, 3,000 K, and 75 watt bulb, what on earth do all those parameters have to do with each other? So in the most basic explanation, lumens is how bright that light source is able to provide said light, kelvins is the color temperature, aka warm or cool, and watts is how much energy it needs to do all those things. In summary, Color temperature is the measurement for expressing the distribution of spectral color radiating from a light source. It is measured in kelvins. Different AV designs call for different color temperature. And last but not least, you have to think not only how the light is being admitted, but also how it's being received. Enter CCT and CRI. These two concepts help us determine the warmth or coolness values of the light produced, as well as how accurately a light source can replicate a desired set of parameters. Let's unpack CCT first. Remember, color temperature itself is the quantification of the color of white light as rated on a numerical scale using kelvins. Correlated color temperature measures the light color that a lamp emits as a single number and indicates the warmth or coolness of the light. Here, we have our trusty chromaticity diagram. We use this to show us all possible colors, their, quote, GPS coordinates, and how colors can mix together based off these coordinates. Look in the middle for a second and notice the curved line. This curved line indicates the color of a theoretical black body as it is heated to the temperature indicated in Kelvin. In physics, a black body is an ideal physical object that absorbs all incident radiation. Have you ever seen blue light coming from a fire? But blue numbers indicate the monochrome wavelength of the image. Remember, the mixture of the main colors of the visible spectrum of light gives us variants of white. Therefore, this curve speaks for itself upon its placement on the diagram. For example, the CCT of LED lights can span from warm white, say 2700K, to cool white, say more like 4000K, to daylight, which is around 5600K. Which you choose may depend on the space or intended task. The higher the CCT, the bluer the light. The lower the CCT, the redder the light. So now that we've understood how to read a Kelvin's measurements, let's look into CRI. CRI is the effect a light source has on the perceived color of objects related to an incandescent source of the same CCT. 
So, say in lighting, a lamp is tested for its ability to render faithfully several test colors, and then those measurements are averaged to produce one CRI number. CRI values range from negative numbers to 100. The most accurate replication of colors is 100. Check this out. CRI values are often expressed by their equivalent CIERA value. When you see the RA, it represents the average test color value of each lamp. Now let's look at line item D50 fluorescent lamp. The RA represents the average accuracy, however if you look to the right, you see the numbers dip a little when looking at say R3 or R9 values. The choice to go with this lamp, based solely on its Kelvin's rating, might end up failing acceptance of a specific brand color your client needs to replicate. In summary, CRI values help determine how accurate the light being produced is able to produce true color based on the CRI index, and the CCT values help determine which Kelvin value your client may desire for their specific task, a cooler classroom or a warmer library.